to this country. Every time you ride in your cars, chances are you will be riding with oil which has been refined coming from Angolan fields. But if there is uh, so much oil in Angola, and if the Chinese are there, and the Americans are there, and the French are there, and the Italians are there, then you must be a very rich country. And your standard of living should be very high. And there should be no poverty at all in Angola. Uh, can you say that there is no poverty in Angola? We're striving towards that. That's our main goal, is to end poverty in Angola. And how are you succeeding? We are not succeeding because it takes time to end poverty. It does not just take oil to end poverty. Unfortunately, oil, if you could eat oil, no problem. You cannot eat oil. You have to, before you can use your oil properly, you need a lot more, many more things, including people trained. Uh, we don't, and that doesn't just mean engineers. I would like to see quite a few. I'd like to look to this crowd or to this group here and see some Angolan students. We need specially people to transform oil into wealth, to transform oil into food and clothes and schools and hospitals. And that takes time and takes particularly good management. We are striving towards that. Good management essentially requires good education. What is the standard of education in Angola? Are you a literate country or an illiterate country? Angola is not a very literate country. The, let me say that back in 19... Uh, the rate of illiteracy in Angola with the Portuguese in the 60s was around 90 percent. Illiteracy. 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 The Portuguese were not very strong in educating Angolans. They were okay in keeping Angola as a place with the uh, wealth to be exploited. And uh, it did not start with oil, incidentally. It started with coffee. It started with coffee. Angola used to be one main producer and exporter of coffee in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And one of the main importer of that coffee was exactly the United States and Europe. And, those, and that coffee at that time was produced particularly in plantations using something close to slave labor to produce that coffee. That was incidentally one of the main reasons why there was the uprising of the Angolans. They, the uprising was against the exploitation in the coffee, uh, in the coffee you know, plantations uh, back in the 60s. And that was the start of the change, uh, the process which uh, ended uh, only in 1975 at the independence of the country. Um, it's quite clear that your relations with the United States are very friendly. Uh, but I would like to ask about your foreign policy, your relations with both China and with Cuba. And how do these relations impact on your relations with the United States? We have, right now, let me say, we have very good relations with the United States. We, our relations with the United States uh, uh, date back, I would not say, uh, and I would not consider our relations just diplomatic relations. I'm talking about relations in the past. The very process of uh, resistance to Portuguese, I would say, quasi-slave or an extension of slavery at the end of slavery as a result of the pressure by both the British uh, 
you know, society and then uh, here in the United States and the rest of Europe, at the end of, of, uh, of slavery, Portuguese extended it to, into, into, into something else which was called you know, forced labor, uh, all those processes. Uh, uh, and and, 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 and uh, uh, we have had a contact with, uh, with uh, uh, American, especially missionaries, uh, in Angola, uh, dating back to the 20s. And our relations have started. Uh, uh, I, I, I remember uh, back in the 50s and the 60s, uh, some of the reports on the situations in Angola were only possible to be carried outside Angola due to the very rigid dictatorship regime that Portuguese had, uh, only thanks to the links with the missionaries who were uh, uh, in Angola. So I would say that, uh, that, that uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you ask me uh, if our process of uh, you know, resistance to you know, colonialism was, uh, was uh, uh, you know, supported by uh, both uh, the missionaries at the time, uh, I would say yes, they played a very important role. Uh, the missionaries coming from various countries, including the UK and the US, uh, especially those two, the Baptists and the Methodists, you know, they're the ones who, 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 who were um, you know, supporting the resistance to, to you know, the brutal, uh, brutal system of you know, colonialism uh, at the time. Are you trying to avoid my question uh, about China and Cuba? China and Cuba. I'm coming to China and Cuba. The Chinese, the Chinese are a very recent presence in Angola. The, I would say that the Chinese came to Angola beginning after the Cultural Revolution and all the rest. This is when the Chinese uh, came in more contact uh, with uh, you know, Angola. Uh, the, the Cubans, Cubans, the Cubans came into Angola also very late in the 70s, uh, in the mid 70s, as a result of the resistance of the Angolans which where that resistance was then supported by both uh, the Cubans and the rest of the world, including uh, Europe, you know, Western Europe and, and uh, you know, the Americans, you know, here, very, you know, the United States. We had, you know, uh, good support for our resistance. One of, uh, let me just say that you know, uh, one of the bishops in Angola, a Methodist bishop, the Methodist Church was also considered to be part of the resistance. And the Baptist Church from the British. The, Brit the Baptists coming from the UK mainly from the, and the, the Methodists mainly, uh, the, 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 yes, you know, the Methodists coming particularly here from the United States uh, to, you know, to Angola as missionaries, uh, they were also considered to be part of the resistance in Angola. Uh, we will be opening the floor uh, for questions. But before I do that, I'd like to ask you to, to identify three problems for Angola and their solutions. If you were to tell me what are the three problems of Angola today, what are they? If I would identify three 
main problems in Angola. I would start with